Okay, we're back, uh, and we're going to do a, <clears throat> a wrist splint now. It's called a volar splint. It's the most common splint probably that we use in our department. Uh, we'll go over a couple of little variations and discuss some of the pitfalls that we might run across each time. Now, with this patient, the first thing I did, as I mentioned before, was I went over and I, I looked at the x-ray, found out exactly where this fracture was, talked to the provider already. I already know that his fracture in this case is a non-displaced fracture of the, the distal radius, this bone on the inside, as we already mentioned. So he's got a non-displaced fracture distal radius, and it's not angulated, um, and it's not it's not completely displaced where it could shorten. But this one has a, just a crack through it. So we're going to put a put a volar splint. Remember, volar or palmar aspect from here to here. It's going to be the hard part of this splint is going to be run from about this position to this position. This at the end of this when we're done. This patient's still going to be able to move their fingers. So we're still going to be able to assess their, their blood supply by looking at capillary fill in each one of their fingers, make sure they're getting good supply. And it's not causing a lot of pain or compression or basically strangulation to the arm. Okay. Then we're going to talk a little bit about a modification of this volar splint in a neutral position, neutral position, by putting another, another layer of material or hardening material, splint material on the dorsum of it just to protect the hand a little bit more. Sometimes the providers will ask for an AP splint versus just a volar splint. Uh, anterior, posterior is that what that AP stands for. Okay, in this case, the first thing, like I mentioned, we're going to look at the x-ray. We know where the fracture is. We're coming to the patient and explaining exactly what we're doing. Explain that you've done these before, you know how to do these, and um, they're going to go through, you're going to go through all of the uh, instructions alongside the patient as you do it and explain what you're doing as you're doing it because they don't know what's happening and they're going to be very protective of this arm. They're very sensitive. Keep in mind, you might need to have somebody else come in with you. Often you do and there's different positions, ways to, to position the hand while you're putting a splint on. You could have an, a partner of yours hold the fingers where they're out of the way. Sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes, the, just depending on the situation, there's all kinds of different situations. You're going to have to hold it and then wrap and pull your fingers out. It sometimes is very difficult. Unfortunately, sometimes the patient is wiggling around and won't hold still for various reasons. There's lots of different reasons why they might not be holding still. This is not always the, the perfect scenario of a patient just sitting here letting you manipulate their uh, extremity as you wish. So we're going to go through that, the ideal situation where, where the patient is cooperative, but keep in mind this it's not always this easy. Okay? So we want to measure how far or how long our material needs to be. You can absolutely use one of these measuring devices. They're always in here. I typically don't because just saving a step for me, I just grab some of the material the web roll, this is called web roll, we already mentioned that, and I'll me measure it myself on the patient. Make my first piece of material, and like I mentioned before, I'm, I'm, I'm going from, in this case, I'm going from behind the fingers, where he could still make it a, a fist around my finger, from that point, I'm going down, not all the way to this bony prominence down here, I want to, I want, and I also want to be careful when he bends his elbow, I don't want a piece of material stuck right in the crooks of this elbow where he's going to be pushing it into his arm. It's got to be away from it far enough. Typically what I like to use just two of your fingers from the, from the distal part of the elbow, the furthest part down, two fingers down and you go to that point and then all the way up to this where you can wrap your, his hand around. Okay. Here to here in his case. Okay, we measured that already. You can measure it this way. Just so you guys see here to the 12. All right. And then laying it on here, which is exactly the, the same. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer. First thing I'm going to do with, in, in this case, 
is make sure I have the right uh, size web roll. And I don't think I do in his case, okay? I might want to go with something a little bit bigger. It's a bit small for him. Often I'll, I'll use this three inch, but I think I'm gonna just switch. And don't be afraid to switch out. If it's not right, change it, okay? Don't, don't, don't just try to make something work, all right? In his case, we, we went, I already had measured, we're 12 inches. And if it goes a little bit long, it's okay. What I'm doing is laying it out on a flat uh, table, rolling these pieces out on top of it, each other. Now, it is extremely important, I mentioned it before, that we make sure we cover all bony prominences, we cover the skin. I put myself, I'll put at least 10 layers of these on if you're going over a bony prominence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? You can and you don't have to cut this, this just rips, and you can just kind of fold it back on top of it. Alright, I have ten layers here. That is for the that's where the casting material, the hard casting material is going to go on top of, all right? Now, you can actually put too much, okay? Keep in mind, don't think, oh, if 10 is good, 20 is better, and you got this big fat pad underneath them. You don't want that. You don't want it to be much more, much more than that. That's plenty, that is plenty thick to take care of any bony prominences we might have, okay? And protect against the hardening of that orthoglass. All right. So in this case, I'll show you. This is gonna protect the skin and any bony prominences around here, okay? We're gonna use that. Now, a lot of times we will use a stocking net, as I mentioned before. Make sure that that stocking net is not too constricting. And I'll show you that here in a second. Now, I know already that I need 12 inches, I already mentioned that. In this, in this case, I just I, I got at least 12 inches on it. And I'm gonna show you the difference, okay? In his case, he's got his arm would not do well with this stockinette, okay? This will constrict over time, will continue to, con, con, continue to constrict. The other part, the more you pull it out this way, notice the shorter this gets. So it actually has to be a little bit longer than 12 inches, and I still want it longer because we're gonna actually, I'll show you how to use this in order to protect the skin even more by rolling rolling this over the proximal and distal portion of the splint. So in this case, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna use the kind of the medium size stocking net. I'm gonna go down his arm, make sure he has plenty past the point where I told you he's gonna be able to squeeze down. This actually goes beyond, same way down here, Remember I told you we're gonna end about right here, but it's, this goes beyond, because we're gonna wrap over it a bit. Okay, the other thing what we don't wanna do is wouldn't have much use of that, that thumb if we left that there. So what we will do is, what I usually do, is I mark it with my finger, I pull it back off, I don't cut it on the patient, because remember, these patients sometimes are moving around, and they're, and they are uh, sometimes have very friable skin. All you're trying to do is just open, open something up here so their thumb can go through. You don't want to enter the patient, of course. So we're dropping in, thumb goes through. And you make sure that it's not causing any big wrinkles. So you take a look at his thumb, his hand. All right, so <clears throat> I have this material ready and now I'm gonna get my casting material ready. Noel, please tell me if I forget something in the middle of this, okay? So I'm going to use, in his case, uh, probably, I'll use the three inches. It's easier to see just a roller spine. Remember I told you it's going to be about 12 inches long? So these actually have markings on there, and you can, you can use those. I wouldn't rely on them too much, but it's not, it's not uh, perfect science anyway. So 12 inch to here. Cut, 
cutting a little bit extra. Remember what I told you before, as soon as you cut that, first thing you want to do, just so you don't forget, tuck this back down in here a little bit and use this clip, put it back on that way. The rest of it's not ruined, okay? All right, when I pull this out, sometimes it's about the right size in this case. Sometimes what you have is one end that's really hard. Take that off, don't use that hard end. So what I always do is, remember I talked to you guys about this before, pull these ends up because remember how this is gonna turn hard and it's gonna be like a little saw blade. So cover that saw blade at the end. See that one protruding out? Again, hold on to it in the middle, pull it up, pull it up, that saw blade is covered, okay? Now, you have a lot of time to work with this. You don't have to start panicking just because you pulled this out. But once you spray it, you have probably about eight minutes before it starts hardening up, okay? It gets to the point where you just can't move it anymore. Can I show them an option? Yeah. yeah. If, for some reason, you don't have enough of this to pull, these are taped along one side. So you could take that back, scissors, cut about a quarter of an inch off. So if it's not pulling like you want it to, you've solved your problem. Good. Now you've got a little bit of extra padding. It's absolutely key to make sure you're not cutting on that patient. This is what you're eliminating, those. They're like little needles. All right, so I have my two, my two pieces. Technically, this is really all that we need in general. Now, for a little bit more padding, uh, sometimes what we'll do, what I will do, is I'll, I'll hold this here, especially when I'm alone, have the patient do exactly what he just did, hold on to this. And then what I can do is take the smaller, like a three inch or two, two inch web, web, web roll, and just cover, just to hold it in place. And it, what it does, make sure you don't have any folds, what it does is it just helps hold, the, hold it in position Make sure that these don't fold up on themselves. And you don't have to be real careful with this, but it just, and all that does is just hold, holds, holds this so when you put this on, it's already there in place and you, don't, and you don't have to worry about both of them falling down. It also gives a little bit more padding for the backside, okay? So in this case, Going from here, I'm gonna already have my plan in place. Grabbing my, I always like to use two inch and three inch on these. <clears throat> First one is the two inch that I'll put on around the fingers and then, then the three inch. I tell people whenever they're putting any splints on, always wrap from the most distal portion down to the proximal portion. Never wrap from the proximal to the distal, all right? Always go from this furthest end down, okay? Get my materials ready, because like I said, you don't have a whole lot of time, don't panic, but you don't, but even, even if you don't provide water to this, it will still get hard, it just takes a little while to do it, okay? We're just speeding the process along, because it'll pull moisture from the air. In this case, we're ready to go. I think I've got my material ready. I've got my casting material or splinting material ready, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna splay. Now, I mentioned before that I'll, I'm gonna use a, a towel to, to take off the, any excess water. So the spray I'm gonna use, I'm gonna show you here. Sorry, Jason. No problem. That much spray is about all we need. Sometimes you can maybe put a couple on the backside just to just to get it going. I sort of rub it in. Then I take my towel. And what you can do with these towels, a lot of people do this, especially when these things get long, is roll it up inside there. Okay? And squeeze it pretty tight. Roll it, roll it out. And that should be basically enough. One more time, just to make sure that excess water. And we mentioned why. Again, take one more last check. Make sure your material is up, up inside. It's not gonna cut on the patient. And then 
hold it in place. Again, make sure that this un underneath this area, pull those out a little bit here, down. This only goes to this position that I talked about before. Okay, have the patient squeeze down or, or your, your partner help you. And I usually start, this, this is sometimes tricky. Um, all of our uh, ACE wraps have this, have this Velcro on them, it's a, it's, which is nice. It doesn't work opposite very well. Uh, you have to uh, roll it out the correct way for it to work properly. So what I usually do is start on this side, I hold one, one hand on this hind with my thumb holding this here, and I start wrapping around, and it, and it connects to each other as soon as you go around. Couple around the top. Again, I'm using two inch. I always like to do two inch. Make sure this wraps closely. If you need to have somebody hold it up, you can. But now in this case, what I typically do, take a little second, I'll pull this stocking net down. Add a level a layer of protection. And then I'll wrap it one more time around the top. And that's why I use the two inch so I can go in this, this little space right here because the three inch just doesn't work right. Okay, and I wrap around. And then I basically use up my material down here on the hand. Take care not to make sure this doesn't flop flop out. Often it happens to me all the time. I lose control of this thing, goes flying across the room, have to go get it. Take the time to re-roll it so you can put it on there properly. Now I got my three inch. I'm ready to go. I already had it set in there ready. So because I'm still hold, sometimes still holding the patient. And again, I still do the same thing. Wrap it on that side. I go around one time. One time so it, so it catches on itself here. Okay, cover the end we just did. And again, I'm wrapping. Staying in neutral position. Going all the way down in this case. I'm pulling this up. As I mentioned before, kind of wrap the end of it up. And then basically burn up the rest of your ace wrap. Typically for just a normal size person, a two inch and a three inch ace wrap works just fine. And what I usually do, if remember, he's got a broken distal radius right here. That's where it's going to be so sore on him, okay? Sometimes it's it's numbed up, but normally it's not. Normally you, you have to be real careful with it. So then I give it just a little bit of a little bit of a squeeze to kind of form it around, making sure bony prominences. Ask the patient, does you, you, how does it feel for you? Does it feel too tight? So I often ask, is there any area on it feels too tight? Feels feels good. Okay. <clears throat> if there is, and this other thing I, I do, let them bend, let them move it around, make sure it's not it's not hitting something you didn't expect. Make sure he squeezes down. His thumbs are out of the way. Nothing's cutting a thumb. And in this case, this is what our, our typical roller splint should look like. Any, anything added? Okay, there you go.